It's time again for the $30,000 Can Open Challenge, brought to you by American Car Care Centers in conjunction with CNA and the International Can Open Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to the Woburn Bowler Drome. John Holt with uh, Dan Murphy, as usual, and uh, we're about four weeks into the season, and it's been one guy winning the championship every week. That's right. Richie Marrick is, is really carrying the torch, and he's going to try to make it four in a row today. But two challengers will be, will be meeting just in, a, in just a few minutes with Trina, and that's our sprint version of the show, that one game, the winner of that one game, will take on Richie in a two-game match to determine this week's cha champion and, of course, come back next week and hopefully uh, complete the round robin. Let's check in with Trina standing by with this week's challengers. Trina? Thank you, John. Today's challengers are David Barber and Dennis Nuzzo. And first, we're going to talk to you, David, because I understand you beat Dennis by one pen in the qualifying round. Yeah, he had a, uh, a pretty good lead on me going into the last string, and then I, I came back and took it over and beat him by one. So it should be a good match now. He's going to be gunning for me. What do you think? Is, is he smelling a rematch? I, I think so. He's, he's got the edge for me right now, so <laughs> i got to just watch, watch my back. All right, so we'll, we'll watch carefully, too. And Dennis, you were telling me you just came back from an injury. Yes, I uh, separated my thumb tendon, and uh, the doctors told me I'd never bowl again. I looked at back at him. I said, you want to bet? <laughs> so uh, first roll off. I actually made it. They beat me by a pin going into it, so yeah, there's going to be a rematch right now. <laughs> a rematch and a comeback. There you go. That's what we like to hear. It's going to be a good one. We'll keep watching. Back over to you, John. Trina, thanks. Uh, Richie, back with us, 19 years old, but very consistent for a young bowler. Is that something you pride yourself on, that consistency? You're really steady. Well, they say practice makes perfect, and uh, I put in a lot of time, I put in a lot of practice, and I always, consistency is key in this game. Can't have too many low, low games in the low hundreds. Got to keep the bad ones in the teens, so that's what I've been trying to do. It's working out good so far. Have you started to think about what you're doing, winning so many weeks in a row, or are you just kind of keeping your head in the clouds and just keep playing? You can't, you can't overthink anything in this game. If you overthink one shot, it'll lead to overthinking a whole game. It'll, over, it'll overtake everything, so I'm not ready to fall apart just that. I'm going to ride the cloud, see what happens. <laughs> Good approach. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Back with the Challengers round right after this on CNA. Back in Woburn for the one-game Challengers match, David Barber. On the left of your screen, and Dennis Nuzzo on the right, and we are all set to go. Dennis will go first. The pregame uh, handshake, and uh, we're all set. Good sportsmanship on display as usual here on the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. Waiting in the wings, of course, is the 19-year-old who you uh, met once again in the opening to the program, Richie Myrick, looking for four in a row. Dennis will open by dropping three. He's from Saugus, Massachusetts, North Shore, north of Boston. Gets some more and three left for his third ball. Nine box to open with for Dennis Nuzzo. We will uh, utilize, as usual, lanes 35 and 36 at what is a terrific facility, the Woburn Bowler Drome, and just great hosts for our tapings. Glad to be back. Interesting. Both bowlers bowl out of the uh, Lucky Strike lanes. Actually, I think it's Lucky Strike Recreation in Massachusetts. In fact, uh, the other challenger, Dave Barber, his father, and mom owned Lucky Strike Lanes and, and Lynn, so certainly know each other pretty well. Pair of nines for a total of 18 for Dennis. Yeah, they were joking around a little bit before, uh, before the game. You can tell that they uh, have a friendship and uh, history together. Of course, the final roll-off was held at the Needham Bowlaway in Needham, Massachusetts. Scott Moore did a great job there. So stop into our ICBA members and Tell him you watch the show. So both uh, bowlers will be open, at least in frame one. Good look at David, 21 years old. And the young guns are on the program today, including, of course, the champ, Richie Myrick. On to his second box. The five pin stays. Let's see where the wood settles down. Oh, nicely. 
if he can get that uh, wood and or the kingpin. Well, definitely the kingpin will get the spare. Gets it. So the first mark goes to David Barber. Dave Barber, another one of those uh, children of Hall of Famers. His dad, Jim Barber, was inducted just recently, uh, well, a few years ago, into the Canopin Hall of Fame. It all runs together when you when you get up, have the experience you do, right? Right. Just recently yeah. can be a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, just recently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything recently is in the last 25 years. <laughs> oh, John, I hate you sometimes. <laughs> Dennis, the third box. He's got a 9-9 nine, nine and a 10 box, so total of 28. You see his average of 119. Looking for his first mark. He's going to drop nine, have a good opportunity right here. He's going to corral that seven pin with his ball. He'll have his first mark. Wood rolled off into the channel, so he's got a clear path. Right foot. Yes, oh, it's nine box. Nope. It went the channel first. Yes, it went in the channel first. Well, those old guys with the glasses, we got our <laughs> eyes, eyes, eyes a little sharper than you Absolute, young guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Something to be said for uh, experience. I'll give you that. And the head pin is Dave Barber, but just five to show for it and a 23 and a five pin advantage through two frames. Nice smooth ball. They don't even hear that ball hit the lane. That's a total of seven there. Added to the 23. David 30 now. Two pin edge through three complete. Follows it up by dropping nine. Chance for his second mark. Looks that wood's in a very nice place that if he misses to the right, probably carry him off that piece of wood into that four pin. So does just that. Another spare for Dave Barber. Dennis still looking for his first mark. He'll be halfway through his game after this box. On the head pin to drop six. The three, the six, the four, and the seven. Misses to the right. Behind as he is, can't be leaving those pins up, those three pins. No, he was pinning pretty well up until that seven box, but he needs marks, obviously. Four down, six still up. Just missing, leaving the head pin. So without a mark through the first six, and now here comes a big ball for Dave in the uh, fifth, coming off the spare in the fourth. He'll add to that total with the fill and start to put some distance between himself and Dennis. Well, he'll miss to the left. Still get five out of the deal. Increases his lead to eight. Couple more left with the two goalposts. Surveying the situation, waiting for uh, the wood to settle. Oh. Got them both. Very nice 10 box. Increases the lead now to 11.
You see, just use that wood effectively. Ball takes the 10, wood takes the seven pin. And then a pin drop of six. And wood rolled out just enough so we can take a piece of the wood and the five pin. Well, now it's coming out too far. Now he probably wants it to come all the way out and turn, but I don't think that's going to happen. Now, it's got to be above the red line and see what happens. He's got two marks. Dennis without a mark. That's essentially the difference right now through six. 11 pin advantage. 64-53. Dave picked up uh, 10 extra pins in the fills, and he's up 11. So there essentially is your difference. Seven and eight now for Dennis Nuzzo. Ooh, almost the backdoor strike. Everything but the head pin. Gets that head pin to move over, but not fall over. There's a mark for Dennis. Hanging around, <laughs> blessing himself. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't too sure of that shot. He was far to the right, but he had a lot of room over there because we had a piece of dead wood there angled just right to clear out the head pin. Just four on the fill, though. Looking for consecutive marks. Got six pins to contend with. Up to 77. Now Dave opposite that mark in the seven. Should he go open? Things will get a little tighter. Might get another one. No, oh, that one fell backwards. He might have had to strike be a little concerned with the 10 pin. A lot oh, of concern. There's another situation where he, uh, maybe a, just a little slower ball might have kept that pin in play a lot longer, but when you try to ease up on your speed, you lose the accuracy, and that's not good either. So he loses four in his lead down a seven through seven complete, and now opposite the open box from Dennis in the eighth. few times he missed a head pin and one of the better spare leaves he's had. The one in the seven, a couple pieces of wood in between the head pin and the seven pin. Big mark to Dave. That'll go a long way in making Dennis's life difficult for the final two boxes. Catches just a little bit of the head pin and that was all needed. The ball caroms into the wood and the wood takes out the seven. Dennis with an answer. Three and ten pins left. Piece of wood out in front. Not a real good angle for the ten pin, but goes straight back. His second mark. Not throwing in the towel just yet. No, he needs a, a real big fill, though, and another mark to at least give Dave Barber something to think about when he gets up filling his mark. He's another one to go. Okay, got a big chance there on the 10 pin, 9 pin drop. Good healthy fill in 9. Can he make it a spare? No. no. Caught the channel. He'll finish with a 105. Barring a total collapse by, by Dave Barber, he sh should be fine. All depends on this first ball. Decent fill here, and he can just pin out. Fill a six gets him to a 90 through eight. He needs an 11 more, uh, excuse me, nine more to tie.
Now he's going to need seven, of course, to get to that 106 total. Get six. There's the tie. Two one balls. More, one more pin's got to fall with two balls. And <laughs> there you go. There's the one. Never waste them. Don't get any more than you need. There you go. 106. <laughs> One's as good as a million. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the smirk to his uh, friend. <laughs> Little embrace. Dave Barber on to take on the champ. Richie Myrick. That's next, right here on CNN. Back to game one of the championship match. Richie Myrick, our returning champ, looking to make it four in a row, will go first versus Dave Barber, who was just victorious by the slimmest of margins, one pin over Dennis Nuzzo. And this is this is a difficult feat, too. I mean, everyone knows now that we take four shows in a day, and so to win four in a row, it takes uh, it's a, lot of, a lot of talent, but a lot of mental strain, too. It's your new opponent every, day, every time, and you got to be on top of your game. That what makes it m more amazing, the debt Klein winning eight matches in a row. Of course, Joe Cassio last season had a yes. yeah. terrific run as well. I believe he had seven, I believe. Just fell one shy of debt. But he's a lot younger than debt. That's a good point, yeah. yeah. Four horsemen over to the right for Richie. Gets the head pin, leaves a three, six, and ten. So he'll be open in one and two. Turned a pretty quick starter in his championship matches over his uh, run. This time it's a nine and another nine, total of 18. Not a David Barber. In his previous matches um, against the Pete Iannuzzi, he opened up with a 137 against John Winchell, 124. And then last week against um, Sam D'Agostino, 126. So. empty on that one. End up getting eight. He'll move over to lane 36. Looking for our first mark of the championship match, two game match. The winner to return next year. Almost a strike. We may have to have another Earl sighting. In fact, we do. Well, he was almost down there before the camera could catch up with him. Of course, this is a show right after lunch. He's got a lot of energy. Yeah, it's not one of these guys that is worried about the camera angle or, no. or whatever. He's Just do my job. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's a flattering shot or... So a mark for David, 18 apiece, but David will have that fill coming up. Richie's gonna drop seven. Leave three in the back row there, the 10, uh, nine, seven. That's a theme, nine, nine, nine. Leaving one pin up all three times, total of 27.
Here's the big ball. Would it have tripped the four pin? Not quite. So he picks up the spare, his first mark coming in the fourth. Breaks that string of nines. Spoke about him being consistent at the top of the program. It really has been. And as you might expect, he's going to get that mark sooner rather than later if he hadn't had one in a while. Big nine pin drop on the spare. That's a good fill. Chance to make it consecutive marks now. Make it two in a row. There you go. Back to back spare for it. Dave Barber. We're going to make it three in a row. Nine go down. Got one in the back row. I can't just tell you how nice it is to see someone lay the ball down like Dave Barber does. You get a lot more pin action. Lay that ball down. Let it start its revolutions by the time it hits that that pin, those pins, and get a lot of pin action. That's three in a row for Dave. There's his father, Hall of Famer, Jim Barber. His lead up to 19. Of course, Richie with a fill right now here in the fifth. And a good one at that, too. Going to get eight, look like nine. Instead, it'll be eight. Leaves himself the two and the eight, but he has wood in between. He's on the two pin. He should make it two in a row. Yes, sir. Starting to pick up a nice rhythm. Phil Ball in the sixth. Right back with a strike. No, nine pin drop. Looking for three consecutive spares. Miss off to the right. Not happy about it either. Leave that pin up. So 73 the total through six. Back to David. Yeah, working on a string of three in a row. And make it four in a row, and this time a strike. He is one red hot bowler. Take a look as it happens fast. Even in slow mo, it happens fast. <laughs> Two in a row. Almost had the double. Leaves himself the three and the six. Can you make it five marks in a row? Three spares, a strike. What next? Go. Oh. Not quite. We're going to step aside, take a break. Good one so far. Some uh, good bowling on both ends. We'll wrap up game one when we come back on CNA. Back at Woburn. Seventh box, game one. And the two-game championship match between the reigning champs. Richie Myrick stepping in at the moment and Dave Barber. Right up the middle, leave the uh, spread eagle and the uh, eight in the back. Richie's just 19, Dave just 21 years old, two of the younger bowlers we see in the program. Two marks for Richie in the game, four and five. 
open here in the uh, seventh. Looking for his first strike. Oh, almost. Almost got it. Leaves just a six spin. Wood won't be a factor. Uh, two times in a row now on 36, he's missed a six spin for Marks. Just sliding by in the right. That's a nine box up to 91. Leaving some pins out there. Now it's David in the seventh. Drops five, five still up. Four, seven to the left, three, six, ten over to the right. box pushes his total to 104 through seven that's a good score remaining in game one as we look again at the strike from David Barber. Let's see, the five pin is going to be taken down last. That's his fifth mark out of eight frames for Dave Barber. Back to Richie, who is in a position he has uh, been unaccustomed to, falling behind in the opening game. That's a nine for Richie. He has been uh, deliberate in his first three weeks. Seems to be pushing the pace a little bit. No. You know, the body language tells a lot. And if I was his opponent, I would say, well, I can't say that now. <laughs> he throws a strike. But his body language tells me he might be throwing a towel in. You want to do that. You don't want to give your opponent that impression because he could turn around and do the same thing. But as I say that, he throws a strike. So. I uh, too good a bowler, you'd, you'd think, to allow that to happen. That's but true. you're right, the body language seemed to be a tip-off, yeah. particularly in that ninth box. Get one more ball. <laughs> That'll total him up at 115 for a game one. Winning the four in a row, and in this case, four during the same taping, as you mentioned. Dan, he keeps a little bit of a mental grind. Well, he's making strides to establish himself as one of the young guns, but again, you know, that attitude, you, you've got to hide that. You've got to, you've got to really grind it out, win or lose. You've got to be trying every box. Six on a strike gives him 120 through eight. to 130 through nine and uh, he's got one more box to go already up uh, 30 pins wow one in the eight Not his box. No. That's why I mean it, it can. This game can turn around so quickly. Quickly, Richie may pick up ten boxes, ten pins in his final frame, almost. 
So it's a 22 pin advantage for Dave, 137. 115 after game one. We'll start game two right after this on CNN. Back for game two of the championship match and a 22 pin deficit for Richie Myrick, the reigning champ, to make up. He'll go second. David Barber, the challenger, is set to go first. He went up 137 115. Thanks to game one. Five marks in that game, including two strikes. Princeton picked up 77 pins in the second box to the fifth box. The benefit of three spears in that strike. That's a nine to start with. And any open frames are opportunities for Richie. Another spare lead for Dave Barber in the triangle, six, nine, ten in the corner. Right hand corner, that is. And he got it. Well, that won't be open. That'll be a spare for Dave. Now Richie with some work to do if he wants to make it four weeks in a row. Right on the head pin, gets eight to go. He's got the six, seven, three pieces of wood out in front of the seven, which Gonna move some of those across to get the six. Just behind it. Barber open in the first. Myrick open in the first. Now he's opposite of Mark though. Seemed to fall off his pace a little bit now, kind of back into his rhythm. Gets eight to go. A little exasperated though by that result, thought he had more. He's gotta clip this piece of wood on the right hand tip of it, and hopefully he'll come off the wall, grab the six, and then possibly a five, or maybe the ball will kick, kick the five. Just like that, and that's a great shot for Richie Myrick. One gained in count in that exchange, so the lead down at 21. That gets him eight. He's in the three and the five. Trying to make it two in a row. This is where he started his string in the first game. Oh, Got only the three. Looks a little upset with himself. The 10 box. <laughs> it's the fourth frame now. Another eight pin drop, another difficult spare leave though in the the four and the eight, well, the wood to work, roll out of the way now. It's a four and the eight left for him. Got the pair for a spare. Big fill situation for Richie. Could use this as a uh, launching pad. Seven. Gives himself the one, nine, and ten. 
go out to the head pin. Hopefully the head pin or the ball or maybe a piece of wood. Something's got to clear the 9 and 10. That close. Won't go. Yes, it will. <laughs> Hang in there a second. 10 box to 37. All tied up in this game, but it's still the 22 pin deficit that our champ, Richie Myrick, is facing in the first game, and he's opposite of Mark, put up by four. Great try. So he will be open, and uh, the road getting more difficult frame by frame. Five and six now for 21-year-old David Barber. This ball will go a long ways to securing that title. Well, so Richie's still in the, in the hunt here. 25, 26 pins behind. That's three good marks. Stretching that overall advantage to 26 pins to four. A chance for the spare right here. Set up nicely. One, three, six. No question about it. Third mark of this game. All on lane 36 and two, four, and six. Richie looking for some answers. He may be out of them after just what has been a terrific run. Earl on the scene. An active. First taping for uh, Earl. <laughs> Missed it. And there again with the body language, quickly picked up his next ball. Right, and right. And that's very a uh, telltale sign that. Uh, and there's still room. I mean, a double strike here, double strike there, and the thing changes in a heartbeat. But it comes with experience, I think, sometimes. One, two, nine. Nine pins left. And so it'll be just one mark through six frames. Richie here in game two. Perhaps resigning himself uh, to the fact that uh, he's really up against it. Might be in trouble here. We're back with the final four frames right after this on CNA. Here we are back with the final four frames. David Barber in terrific position to dethrone Richie Myrick here in the Candlepin Challenge. 28 pin advantage plus this ball. Just out the four pin for a seven drop. Some 76 through six frames. And how about another mark? John, I know it's early in the season, but he started with 137. Got a decent game going here. If he could get a couple more marks, could put a score up that um, may help hold up. Want to make that top three to qualify for the show. 
Just four in that spare. And much result off the head pin. He actually hit the head pin with the first ball and just got four. Open here now in the eighth. Fell a little flat in the final two balls. Well, I'm sure Richie Myrick is thinking now, I, I need strikes. I'm gonna start with one. Close to one. Leaves up the three and the six. And gets both for a spare. That'd be a little too little too late. Still looking for the strikes, of course. Won't get it on that one. Two, four, six, ten left. Ten pin advantage in this game for David. Thirty two pins overall. And two frames to go. a little full on the head pin. <laughs> One in the five. Well, I guess I know how to cool him off. Once I <laughs> mentioned that it might be a good two, two game total, he hasn't had a spare leaf since. A rally killer. <laughs> The 106 in his final box now. There's a chance to get a spare. To defy that bad karma emanating from Dan Murphy. No. No. <laughs> that was on you, John. You, you got him <laughs> That'll get him to a 115, total of 252, which I would guess would not no. be a consideration for the top three. Well, if history has done. anything to say whether it won't be enough, but you know, you never know. But I'd say if anybody offered David 100 bucks for that score, I'd take it. <laughs> Fair for Richie. He's gonna break 100 easily in this game after his 115 from game one and uh, gonna get a good check to take home after winning the three previous weeks. He'll take home a check for $1,100. More than good. Fills it up with five. The uh, truck just Ask me a question in my headsets, and I'll just say it's in the mail. <laughs> I can't ever remember getting a check for eleven $1 hundred dollars when I was nineteen years old. Never had a job that certainly paid that much in one check. Maybe for a whole summer. <laughs> oh, a great ten bucks by Richie Myrick. But the streak ends at three. Twenty-five pin victory, two fifty-two, two twenty-seven for the new champ, Dave Barber. Back to wrap it up in the Wolverine Bowler Drone right after this.
back at the Woburn Bowler Drome to wrap it up. And uh, Dave Barber, a new champ with some impressive bowling. Absolutely. Any time is impressive you beat a three-time champ. And he did just that. He knew what he had to do. He went out and did it and stayed in the game and kept focused. And uh, he bowled terrific. We'll get to Dave's thoughts in just a second. But first, Trina standing by with a couple guests. Trina. Thanks again, John. I'm here with Dennis Nuzzo and Richie Myrick. And Dennis, not the result that I'm sure you were hoping for, but you proved the doctor wrong. You're back bowling again, so we like proving doctors wrong. What happened with that one pin? I just couldn't get my ball working. Uh, missed a couple of single pins that were easy, and Dave came back and took advantage to beat me by one pin. <laughs> well, we're glad to see you back bowling again, Thank so you. I'm sure we'll see you back here again Definitely. soon. All right, thanks for being here. And Richie, you had a great run today. How are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling good, and I, I guess I'm feeling good. It was a good time. Yeah? yeah. Uh, you were on a nice run there. Yeah, it was a nice run. I uh, faced four good competitors, and the fourth one got me. Dave's an awesome bowler and a uh, worthy champion. And I'd be looking to make or looking to see him for the next two, three weeks at least. Well, you're going to sleep well tonight. Oh, definitely. <laughs> All right. Good having you here as well, Richie. Back over to you, John. Trina, thanks. Uh, standing by with the new champ, and uh, you have a lot to live up to with your, your dad being a Hall of Famer, of course. You did him proud today. Yeah, I think I did. I think he was happy to see that, but I... He's been on a few times, so I'm just trying to catch up to him. You, um, I think you can take the old man, though. Really? <laughs> I, 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 I might be able to. He, he doesn't want to admit it yet, but... I Chris, he's, I he's, as, he's as old as I am. I know you can <laughs> take him. But here, I got a check for $300, uh, maybe uh, the first of many for you. I hope so. You beat a real good champ today. Congratulations. Thank you. That'll do it for the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. For Dan Murphy and our crew, I'm John Holt. We thank you for watching. See you next time. Yeah.